The Bible speaks of signs in the heaven. What does it mean? What is the prophetic significance? Is this the end of the age? And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. From time to time, the sun is shaken by violent eruptions. Hot jets of plasma shoot from the surface as the sun's intense inner motion disturbs its magnetic field lines. Waves are sent through the atmosphere hundreds of thousands of kilometers high and at temperatures rising to 100 million degrees. These eruptions are accompanied by the emission of powerful electromagnetic rays, X-rays, radio waves and gamma rays, as well as charged particles. Visible from Earth, they trigger geomagnetic storms which can affect the Earth's magnetic field. The most obvious magnetic storm display, known as the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights, can be seen in the polar region. The interaction of charged particles within the upper atmosphere causes a sort of multicolored light show in the sky. The more powerful the storm, the more visible the lights become away from the polar region, sometimes disrupting daily life. The phenomenon can interfere with telecommunications and electricity supply. In 1965, a solar storm plunged 30 million homes in North America into darkness. Each solar cycle appears to last an average 11 years, culminating in serious magnetic storms. The current cycles due to reach a climax in 2013. Scientists are already warning of potential disruption to terrestrial communication systems. Australia as uh, they try to bring bushfires un in Sydney under control. More than 200 homes were damaged or destroyed as the fires tore through an area which is larger than New York City. Now more than 60 are still burning and authorities are warning that three of them could merge to form what would be a huge blaze. The fires are swallowing up large areas of bushland in the state of New South Wales and have spread across the Blue Mountains National Park. Firefighters say it is unusual to see blazes this big so close to Sydney and more that if the wind changes direction, hundreds of thousands of buildings. The land that has already been burnt out by these blazes is equivalent in size to the city of Los Angeles. And of course, there's more to be expected because in the coming days, forecasts say the weather is going to get worse. Higher, stronger winds and also higher temperatures coupled with the fact that the vegetation, the undergrowth across much of this area is still very dry, very brittle. So there's a real concern that these fires could expand, could get so big that they all join up to create some sort of mega fire. Well, there is a fierce battle being fought this weekend in Colorado, a dramatic stand against wildfires spreading across the state, forcing evacuations, including in the tiny town of South Fork. Overnight, firefighters called in new reinforcements from the U.S. military. Today, two planes like these from the California Air National Guard will swoop into Colorado's smoky skies. The planes churn out 3,000 gallons of water or fire retardant in five seconds. They'll help knock down the worst of a dozen blazes that have torched more than 133 square miles of Colorado mountains. I saw some smoke. The entire town of South Fork, 400 residents are still evacuated. Flames are moving closer, but so far, every home has been spared. One of the most scenic highways in America. Today, the front line of the biggest wildfire in the West. Today, ABC News cameras got right into the heat of the day's biggest hotspot. A blaze pushed in one direction by hot wind from the desert. I'm not worried about in front of us. And now pushed the other way by a cool ocean breeze. 
It's swirling around. It comes from every direction. The wind is just shifting continuously. Whipping up walls of flame 150 feet tall. Helicopters attack from the air, but there are only eight of them to cover 10,000 acres. On the ground, a thousand firefighters form the infantry. They have to be plumbers as well as foot soldiers, bringing the water right into the flames, stopping the fire in its tracks. Today they race to save a coastal naval base. KABC reporter John Gregory was there. There are structure protection crews from all over Southern California here. They're focusing on this CB Readiness training facility. They're trying to protect it from these flames. The dramatic hills along Route 1 are full of dry brush, practically built to burn. A 1,200-gallon water bottle drowns out flames dangerously close to homes. It's the latest battle between firefighters and a blaze in Beaver Creek, Idaho, that threatens nearly 7,500 homes. This is one of 51 wildfires burning across the West, from Oregon to California to Utah. For the first time in five years, authorities have raised the preparedness level to five, the highest on the scale. Part of the reason? There have been so many lightning strikes sparking fires, and forecasters say there are more to come. Throughout ancient history, there have been global disasters, resetting life on Earth as we know it leaving only remnants of entire civilizations behind. Ancient records of those that have come and gone often speak of signs in the heavens corresponding with their ultimate destruction. Just as the civilizations of old, we've spent decades searching the skies for mathematical patterns between celestial events and global change. But have we been looking in all the wrong places? When astronomers and theologians looked for patterns throughout the ancient biblical calendar with key prophetic dates, everything changed. Now, an unprecedented pattern has been discovered, a warning to all who live upon the face of the earth. For millennia, a rare celestial event known as the Blood Moon Tetrads has coincided with periods of monumental change affecting the Holy Land and ultimately the world. But when it occurs is almost too shocking to believe. 1948, the Blood Moon Tetrads marked the rebirth of Israel. 1967, the Israeli Six-Day War and recapturing of Jerusalem but in an age of globalization in which every conflict sends shockwaves throughout the world, it's what is yet to come that researchers fear the most. According to future projections only possible today, the next occurrence of this anomaly is right around the corner. Does God use the motion of the planets to communicate with us, to announce things to come? Well, many people believe that an astronomical occurrence called four blood moons is a message from God. A blood moon is a full lunar eclipse, and four of them in a row is called a tetrad. This is something that you can check on the internet. This is what NASA says has happened, and this is what they say is going to happen. When they've occurred on the Jewish High Holy Days, it's coincided with major historical events, like the Six-Day War in 1967. Four blood moons on the Jewish High Holy Days has happened only three times in the last 500 years. The next time it occurs is starting next spring on the Jewish Passover. Four blood moons um, have occurred in 1493-94, uh, fall of Spain, the Jews expelled um, from them and Columbus discovers America. 1949 to 1950, it follows Israel being declared a nation. State. And then, a, a nation state. And then 1967, 68, the Six Day War. That's, those are the last three times yes. that a four blood moons have occurred. Right. And so the next time it occurs actually is starting next spring. It starts April the 15th, 2014, next spring, and it happens on Passover. The second blood moon next year will be October the 8th on the Feast of Tabernacles. And then in 2015, it will happen again on Passover. And then it will happen the last time, and that will be on the Feast of Tabernacles. 
what is it about? Here we've got the last day of the last feast in the, in the Hebrew year, the Feast of Tabernacles. And it's all about seven. This, month, this Feast of Tabernacles is all about the number seven. You've got, it takes place in the seventh month. It lasts for seven days. It's all seven, seven. You see this in the Bible all the time, seven. You have seven days of the week. You have se every seventh year is a Sabbath year. Every seventh, seventh year leads into the Jubilee. Seven, what's that about? Seven is the number as you, of completion in the Bible. It's completion. Something is complete when you have that. You, when you look at the book of Revelation, here it's about the completion of the age. What do you see? You see sevens all the time. There's something about the seventh day, something about it. We have a, there's a mystery in the entire age that God has is set up the entire age that goes according to the seven days of creation. What is the, what is the seventh age? If you take the seventh day of creation, you have the Sabbath. If you look at God's prophetic end time plan, what happens after Armageddon? What happens? You have one millennium of Sabbath. You have the millennium. What's the millennium? The millennium is the seventh age. It's the Sabbath age. It's when the lion and the calf lie down together. It's when there's peace on earth, when Messiah rules, when everything is holy. That's the Sabbath. And this month in the Hebrew year is all about completion. And this day, Hoshana Rabbah, is all about sevens because it's all about completing something, completing the purposes of God. And so when you read about the millennium, there's something about the Feast of Tabernacles and the millennium that are matched together. Revelation 19 and 20 speaks about the millennium to come. And then it says that there's something that happens at the end of the millennium. If, if the millennium is linked, the seventh age is linked to the Feast of Tabernacles, then the seventh day of Tabernacles, the end of Tabernacles, will be linked to the end of the millennium. Now look what it says, Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy are those who have part in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Messiah and will reign with him for a thousand years. Verse 12. I saw the dead, the great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. What comes at the end of the millennium? The judgment comes.